Hey guys, welcome back to the channel today. I wanted to, well, I bought this quite a while back and actually had it on the special order, the pre-order, all that mess that took all year long to finally get it. But I kind of want to show you guys this today a little bit and some footage of cutting some trim and stuff we did in this house. We've run uh, almost 600 feet, I believe, of crown molding in this house and uh, close to that in baseboards also. There were a couple areas we didn't do base that we did crown, but not, not really that much. But I came to this from my DeWalt dual compound sliding miter saw, and I still have that saw. It's set up in my shop trailer, but this is now my actual bring into a job site saw for everything except small projects. Small projects, I'm still just running the little seven and a quarter inch DeWalt uh, 20 volt chop saw. If I can get away with that, I do. But there's so many jobs where we're doing a lot of crown and things like that, which is what happened here. You know, if you're doing that the entire home, you might you really need to have something efficient, accurate, and all that. And this special they had going on this, oh, a couple thousand bucks, I think. Really not too horrible on the pre-order deal. The wings, they're a little different to get used to, and I have a little uh, information on how to get these uh, crown stops and stuff set up on them, but I purchased the crown stops as well, and they, the plastic part looks like this, and then this actually, there's just thumb screws that hold this on the rail here from the bottom, and then you're able to just slide your, your stops in with the, well, I have not done these a whole lot other than for this house, so I set them up pretty well and just set and forget. So you have both a slide in and out right here on the base plate, and the top will also slide in and out. So there is a lot of degrees of adjustability to these crown stops. But for me, there's just so many nice things here. I've got it running just with my MIDI vacuum, and the dust that's on this saw right now is literally how much dust there is after... 1200 feet of trim in this home. So we've run it all there. I mean, there's dust on the saw. This is not perfect, but there's no pile underneath it. None of that. It's pretty clean for what it is. It's shockingly better than my DeWalt. So for me, that alone is worth quite a bit. Um, the, the clamping system on this saw is literally that fast. So on my DeWalt, you have the little screw down deal right here. It's just, it's just so aggravating, you just don't use it really. But on here, it has the rapid release, pull it up, you're done. So if you needed to cut something there, it's just put it in, swing this over, press it down on it, roll that lever back, and you're locked in right there. The wings are also nice and simple for this. And that'll just swing back right out of your way. The wings, same story, just a quick thumb screw under here, and you can take the wings right off. Right now I have everything leveled. Um, you just put my one of my Stabila plate levels on here is what I use, and then I can just bring everything to even with that plate level. With these screws out here on the tips of the wings, you can just tighten, loosen those to set the adjustment for how high you want these to be. These end up just pretty nice right off the bat. The other thing, they have the nice flag stops. If you use much Festool, you've seen these before. There's one on each side of the wings. And all you have to do, slide that to where you want it, give it a flip over, just like that. And you and tighten it back down. You can set it for cutting your trim in either direction. You just have an automatic stop. So I think on the DeWalt stand, you have your little flip up black deals that you can set to stop things as well. But this supports the material the entire way down the actual wing. So you don't have, you know, all that open air that I had with the DeWalt stand. Now it's no cut hub system like finished carpentry likes to use. I, that is an amazing looking system. But for what this is and how light it is, it all goes on one cart. To me, you also have a release back here and you can slide out an additional rail out to, oh, pretty far, what, 94 and a half inches or so. And this is the Imperial version that I got here, so I'd have my inches on everything. And it does have a tape right here. You're starting at about 11 inches. 
from the blade and then it'll run out to what I was saying down here about 94 and a half or so for your length and that also has a flag on the end that you can flip up so you could set an additional stop all the way out to whatever length you wanted on each end of this system then when you're done using this the entire thing folds into this cart the two wings go into their own little holding system right down here and then go on the cart as well and the entire thing rolls in on a little two-wheeler wings cart all of it you're just you're just all set so for me very valuable another cool thing is the little angle finder on the back of this saw uh, i've got it set right now to some weird angles that were under these windows here in the front but uh, all you have to do is press this into a corner and you know if you're working on old homes a lot of corners are not perfect 45s so you can press this into the corner and whatever angle it is match it up turn this little knob right here in the center lock it and then when you put it on your saw you have this dotted line here that matches what the laser does so you can lay this right here and then just align your laser with that line and just like that you're now locked in to cut whatever degree angle that is it also allows you to press these little aluminum pieces if you're working on outside corners with this you can press these through and now it will also gauge an outside corner for you so you take your outside corner measurement with this and then just slide these aluminum pieces back in after you lock it down and now this will be your cut angle for an outside corner so it works the exact same way either way just really nice little attachment to have and it stores right on the back of the saw so you always have this with you and it's not something you're going to forget you know very much but i just haven't talked a whole lot about this saw because i've just flat been using it it's been running here on a two-story house that we ran all the trim in um, a couple other older homes historic stuff we've been cutting a lot of you know the seven and a quarter and sometimes even the eight inch even baseboard heights that are just the round over baseboards so we make all of those to match the historical homes but i've i've absolutely loved this thing uh getting used to the handle was really not an issue that a lot of a lot of people have said that it's just a weird handle but for me it just automatically is pretty precise it just has a very precise feel to it when you're guiding it into a cut for me that i don't know within a day if you actually if you bought this saw maybe coming from a dewalt and you're just a, a hobbyist woodworker and you use it a few hours a day it, you may never get used to it but on a job site like this where you're cutting trim you know eight hours a day for weeks on end possibly you get used to it pretty quickly and it's really it's really a non-thing the other one for me was the the forward facing rails there's a few others out there that have it you know the bosch glide at, that has the articulating thing and i believe there's another one also that has vertical rails or something like that but the forward rails where you can actually put this system against a wall in a home and you don't have to take the entire room to use it it's fantastic um so many features with this and there's just no point getting into all of them i'm not here to make a 20 minute capex video but i absolutely love this thing i've had so many questions wanting to know what i've been doing with it and what i think of it so this is pretty much where i'm at on it it's getting run like a beast every day the the highlights is all i'm telling you about that have really stuck out to me the ability to adjust your miter angles right here all you do is flip this up in the back and now this knob right here in the front does it no more am i just absolutely doing this junk to try to adjust a miter saw you know turning the knob in the back turning it and everything i can just take it to where i want flip that down and i'm locked in right there none of that hassle like i deal with on the dewalt so anyway i'm still gonna run the dewalt in its place it's a 12 inch it's a great saw there's nothing wrong with it i still haven't killed it obviously and i've had it what eight years this is this one's first year so we're going to see continue seeing how they go but as far as usability extra features and just awesome on the job site this one is taking it for me all the way around but it is a pile of money 
So if you don't do this all the time, it may or may not be worth it to you. But the accuracy alone, straight out of the box, miters are just there for me on this one. So probably not every one of them. And yeah, my UPS box wasn't in awesome shape when I got it either, but thankfully it wasn't destroyed in the box. But there are a lot of cool features with this saw that you can check out. Festool's got a lot of information on their uh, videos on the saw too. You can do your dados with this. You can do a stop depth cut. Uh, you can adjust it to, to dig even deeper in so that it has the same uh, cut capacity pretty much as a 12 inch slider, even though this is closer to a 10. Uh, just a lot of good features on this saw that I'm a huge fan of. So I love simple, well engineered, as lightweight as possible, easy to deal with in and out of houses. I, all those things really check a box for me. So as far as all that goes, that is my impression of this saw. Love them or hate them and you pretty much fall on one side of the aisle or the other. I have both. So I'm going to continue running both. They both have their place at the moment. I like having a fixed miter saw station in my trailer. And that's eventually going to be switched to the shop as we have some upcoming changes hopefully coming for how we're going to run the trailer, the shop, and possibly a truck change. So could have some cool stuff coming up. Thank y'all for being here. Let me know what y'all think of the new Capex. How many y'all are running the new Capex? I know some of y'all bought it. See y'all on the next one.